Hello there everyone and welcome back to Empire Total War with the Imperial Destroyer mod. A lot of things have happened that I kind of predicted. Now there was no surprise that the Mughals would try and invade. They've been building armies for quite a while but there's a few other things that happened as well. Um, currently it looks as though they are poised to move directly to the bridge. So hopefully we'll get a large bridge battle where I can destroy most of this. Or we can just push through all of this with the howitzer spam. Still going to be a little bit difficult. There's quite a lot of uh, Mughal troops. But uh, second army as well is now actually ready to move out. So they will be joining and hopefully we can kick the Mughals out of India and will take full control at the same time. A number of other nations have declared war on us. Most importantly, Munster has declared war on us. So, not entirely sure what's behind this declaration of war, because I have had no... Like, we've been, you know, friends along the border for I don't know how long, but now they decide to attack, so I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. Um, I have, anyways, brought back one of the main armies. I have added additional troops. Two Grenadiers, Jacobite Line Infantry, Horse Guards, and I think that's about it. There was about four units that I added. Oh yeah, I added on an extra howitzer. This army only had one to begin with. So we're going to march in. We're going to first go to Munster within Munster, and then we're going to head down and see if we can't hit their capital. I think, though, moving forward into um, territories like these means that we will be coming into border, or, or will border with Bavaria, but also Prussia, and we'll get more of a border with uh, Wurzenberry. So there's a risk that any of these three will declare war on me. As my economy is pretty well, I have gone ahead and taken the precaution to actually start adding gifts to a number of nations, especially Prussia. They are the ones that I kind of fear. Now Prussia has been heavily beaten back by the Swedish. Um, so kind of cut their country in two and they take control of Eastern Prussia. So Sweden is proving pretty well there, but I'm sure the AI is stupid enough to go ahead and declare war on me as well. Bavaria, very unhappy with me. Um, and uh, they might very well declare war if I take this territory. Which I actually intend to do, because why not? Um, they've been causing quite a bit of problems with this declaration of war, so why shouldn't I punish them? And also that brings me closer to the Virgin Barriers that kind of stole a province out from under me by attacking the rebels and taking that province. So that brings an actual road into that territory because there's no road from Flanders into this so you'll have to walk across uneven terrain, and it takes quite a while, as we know, in this mod to walk anywhere. So it'd be good if I actually have roads to make it down towards this territory. That would be nice. What else is there? I'm just going to have to check here, because it was a... I don't exactly... Yeah, we're still more with Denmark. My original plan was actually to bring this army to bear against the Danish. But, I think if I were to take any of these territories, there's a big chance that Sweden would go ahead and declare war on me because they want to take these territories. from. They want to attack Denmark. I don't know why they haven't attacked and taken out Denmark. Seems like it would be quite an easy task to do that. Especially also since they're allied with the enemies of Sweden, so Prussia and Russia, Mughal Empire for some reason. I guess that's because they're kind of in coalition against me with the Mughal Empire, so they kind of joined in there. 
But that's what's going on there. No real problem because these guys, they will have to push through very uneven terrain to get to here. And I'll have plenty of time to build, prepare a defense. And of course the river goes by here. So they can't advance on my capital. So that's great. With that, I'm also, yes, the Ottomans have been causing a bit of problem, so I moved part of my navy, so I was hoping that maybe I could go ahead and block here. It's kind of been touch and go, because certain turns take a very long time, and then it goes back to normal. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. The Ottomans do, in fact, have mighty power, but they're only rich in wealth. So I think they might be overspending on army. non sure. We might just go ahead and invade, take something, and kind of make... I either gave it to someone else, like I could imagine attacking Bulgaria, taking that, and allowing, either allowing it to become its own nation, or giving it to someone else. Same with uh, Istanbul, or Constantinople, I mean. Um, yes, back to India. I'm pretty sure if I end turn, then we'll go into war right here. Then we'll face off in a battle against the Mughals. They've got no recourse but to cross the river, and the only place to cross the river is this bridge. And if they want to go bypass the river, they'll have to go into the woods, and there's my army. And on the other side, there's a mountain range that I can't even go through there, so I'll have to go all the way around there. Also, as I said, my economy is doing really well. Now it's partly because we have good st I actually don't even have three stability. So I only have two, and even with that, I'm making 15,000 per turn. So that's really good. Also, we've got... Uh, as you can see, all the provinces are... Um, I mean, I'm not even taxing most of the provinces to the fullest. So I could ma be making even more, and soon enough I'll be getting... Uh, we get citizenship, which I believe gives me one plus to the lower classes in happiness, and also one to the ruling classes. Not that I need that. A 1 plus happiness to lower classes will definitely help me a lot. It means that even if I fall below, kind of will fall down to 1 in happiness, certain areas that are not culturally Dutch will still kind of be controllable. The main thing will be abolition of slavery, where I gain 4 happiness for the lower classes, and that will eradicate a lot of of the problems I've been having with um, a lot of the problems I've been having with um, unhappiness. But with that said, we are going to end turn and it's going to be hopefully a river crossing when an absolute slaughter. Oh, I completely forgot that I was at war with Spain. Spain hasn't done very much. I uh, Yes, that's one of the things. I have actually... My secondary main army is actually in New Orleans territory, moving against the Spanish. But not a lot is happening there. There's no way I'll be able to take on this fleet. They have their own 90 gun ships, plus 274. And then an additional 57, plus 2 heavy frigates. Razi frigates. And then a 40 gun ship. And what I have is 190 and 256. There's no way we'll be able to uh, shoot down these ones. Now I can't retreat. But I think if I'll go into the, ma the battle and then immediately just retreat. I will be able to get away from the Spanish. I guess I could... I've, I'm sending most of the fleet here. So I could get all of them into this area. And sink the Spanish fleet that way. But yeah, unfortunately I have to play this before we get through. And I was able to get away. And there's nothing more to say be said about that. Wow, this is disappointing. First, a naval battle that I didn't want. And now they send me a small scouting force, really. Is it? You know what? Now that I take a look, closer look here. 
Is it that the Mughal Empire is suffering from uh, its own instability? It cannot pay for its troops? Had this region maybe been hit by a disease? The army, an army of this size should at least, that should be a few thousands. It's barely two thousand. And when I notice they are on the flags, most of these are broken up. It could be that the Ottomans don't actually have as many troops as we do think they have. This should be quite easy, but this surely is not the battle that I'll show you today. You know what? I changed my mind. I didn't realize this was an ambush battle. How did I miss that? Anyways... Let's uh, go ahead and blow their columns sky high. With all my mortars. I mean howitzers. Let's hold fire until their cavalry gets a little bit closer. Right, also guard mode. And off we go. Fire it well. Cavalry destroyed. Oh, return fire? Let's see. What else can I focus my fire on? These guys firing back. And... Infantry moving over here. And even if they were able to... Break through this... Which I very much doubt... I get the full support of an entire army coming in from up here. Now they have actually broken through. And they have upset my cannons. I think we'll have to focus these over on that. And then I can take these and focus over there. I guess one of the big problem here is the cavalry that's made its way through the lines. Anyways, as you can clearly see, the um, the um, enemy army isn't really going anywhere. They don't really stand a chance, do they? Let's see if we can't get a proper battle though. The result of that ambush, we actually lost quite a bit of troops there. A large part due to the fact that the enemy army was mostly consistent of cavalry. And they were able to break through the militia and hit the artillery. None of the artillery pieces were destroyed, so that's good. As far as I can see, anyways. There should be... Shouldn't there be ten of them, I think? Or am I wrong? Lost. Militia, 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 66, or I should go for remaining, right? 24, 30, everyone, yeah, everyone should still be there. Good. I'll have to send my spy to take a look at what the Mughals actually have. 80% chance? Ah. It seems like the Mughal army is, in fact, starving. All of their units are broken down. That will make it a lot easier to defeat them. Ah oh, yes, Lower Louisiana. So, got a bit of a cat and mouse game here with this army. But I intend to bypass it because it's not... It's not trying to come to battle, so I'm just gonna... Why am I gonna run around after it? Also, as a scout, because I don't have any spies here, I recruited native auxiliaries. So we'll see if they are able to actually go past the army here and be quicker. Then we got fleet arrives. So the main fleet arrives. And it will join with these ships that were forced away by the Spanish. Suddenly, I am the one with a big fleet, and the Spanish find themselves outnumbered. 
And trains gain stability. Du, du, du. Expansion. I have. I don't know why I'm still getting expansion. Because I have not deal with it. Because I don't currently have anything. But I guess just because I've uh, stability, control points, recruitment army, recruitment navy, control points fifty. I don't really need to recruit anything, but at the same time, having that minus 10% in recruitment is going to do us a lot of good. New task, build an iron workshop. This navy, I do have the third carronade frigate coming in as well, it's just, it went through another way, because I had sent it to a separate port to repair it. But now we've got a massive fleet. The thing is, I would need an army though if I'm going against, if I'm gonna go against the, the Ottomans to, once and for all, really break them up. We've got a British army in on our territory. Maybe they're coming to aid us. We're gonna move forwards here. We're gonna burn this garden. I assume that if I move within range, they're going to attack me. So we're going to wait with that. That's not what I'm going to look at for this episode. We're going to go back to India. So the Mughals seem to be really be starving. The power is strong and they are affluent. So I don't know what what's the what the problem is. As far as I can see, the region isn't suffering either from uh, any malnourishments, as it were, but notice how it's all they've all but turned into Catholics, and that the unhappiness is rising quite high in these regions. We do have multiple spies. Let's go ahead and check if all these armies are, in fact, yep, they're all starving. Interesting. They're all starving all across the board. Let's go ahead and uh, fix these armies up. Let's see, will they be able to... Oh, I don't even reach. We'll see if they will be able to draw all these starving troops here and destroy them. We've got Mughal Navy. Don't really need to worry about that. You need seven troops added to your uh, army. Everything seems fine here. This needs to be repaired. Actually, not. That's going to bring two unhappiness, and that's going to maybe push these guys over the edge. What we're going to do is we're going to continue forwards through here. Do we have... Oh, yes, I'm building roads. That's why it's taking a bit longer here. And then up in Spain, I've already moved them and we moved forward here ah this army is moving against us we need to bring in additional troops to this area then I don't have that much money though best thing would actually be to get a howitzer I think well, I can since I have navy here I don't need these troops to guard the ports so both these units can join in, plus we've got quite the garrison, so we should be able to hold there. Nice. I want to bring all of this into battle, so let's see if I can't achieve that. I keep getting this Pontiac Rebellion, but it never actually happens. Interestingly enough, I think the event actually triggered something last time in this island, because we did actually have separatist form here, which is kind of odd, because I've never had a problem otherwise with this area, and I had 50 miners-ish in public order, so there was nothing I could do. So I don't know if Pontiac made it down all the way here uh, to <laughs> deal with <laughs> this area, which seems rather odd. Extra troops in Hyderabad. Fleet has arrived. So now the full fleet is ready. Oh, looks like the Spanish have brought in extra ships. Seeing that, 
we could then have quite a huge naval battle. Would be quite difficult because they have a number of ships that outgun mine. They have 290 ships and then it looks like they have 374 gun. Uh, yeah, 390 gun and 374, so that's a lot more than mine. So I would want to take them on one by one. So I wouldn't go in against both these fleets because that actually outnumbers mine. Uh, port. Religion. Conspiracy. Thing is, the rulers are old. Doesn't matter that much about the conspiracy. True to the government policy. Timely and correct, the changes of internal policy often results in improved stability and serves to prove the government is increasing in the welfare of its subject. Stability plus one. I have full stability, so we'll go for treasury and points. Two plus religion. I don't need that much religion. I only have I already have like what 74 points in religion. So we'll take control points. Intrigue. We'll deal with it that way. Now let's head over back to India. So it looks like they might have been well the flags are fixed. But I don't know if that means that yeah they're still they're still fucked. Um given that there's three armies here though. That's kind of a lot. And as I move in, all the armies join in the battle. We even get a fourth one joining in. So there's almost 10,000 in. This is what I've been looking for. Almost 10,000 Indian troops against my 6,000 or so. The only thing I should have changed is I should have merged the militia units into a single one so I could have gotten more of they this um, I'm gonna change I'm not gonna need extra howitzers and the general needs to come kind of lost but otherwise that looks fine let's draw into this major battle the battle is underway and we're looking at the first wave of enemies. My reinforcement troops are just about to be able to join in the battle here. My cavalry has just defeated enemy cavalry. Oh shit, war elephants. Why have you guys stopped? I ordered you to run over here. My militia has been overrun by the enemy and they're now pushing towards the artillery, which is quite bad. Not Hydra bad as of yet. However, uh, my cavalry is coming in as to support here. A large part of the problem I'm facing here is the fact that the enemy armies are so much, so many of them, the units, are made up by cavalry. But hopefully we should do fine here. Oh, the war elephants moved behind you. Just forget about them and move into uh, to aid us. Right. It's complete chaos on the battlefield here. I don't think my cavalry will hold for too long in the center. So I definitely need to get those infantry units in here. That elephant unit is continuing to chase us. I'm gonna set the um, Sepal Regiment to shoot them down. The thing is, the artillery crews are not as vulnerable as they are in other games, or as other uh, Total Wars. 
So they are able to uh, actually put up quite the fight against enemy armies. Okay, I've been able to push through there. Let's go ahead and hit these guys in the back. And then get the infantry units. Right, the elephants were shot down. However, there's another elephant unit coming in. Let's go ahead and prepare for that one. You push through. And we've got another cavalry unit going up north. A lot of cavalry fighting in this area. It's going to get my infantry to close in. Get the cavalry to join in. Get this howitzer crew to back off. You guys get back on your howitzers. You're going to be able to do a lot more damage that way. Elephants charging the Sepoy Regiment. However, they're not able to break through and they get shot down. Another regiment coming in. Lots of fire being poured into this area. We've got two howitzer crews fighting in there. And then three regiments of horse which I definitely want to pull away so that my infantry can open fire upon them the elephants are gone we're getting more support from uh, the corner let's have the cavalry turn back into the fight Get back on the howitzers. Turn around and shoot at the enemy. What an absolute mess this turned into. I don't even know where the where next wave of en enemies are coming from. But... Um, it's starting to look like we're going to push away this first attack. I call it first attack, but this could of course be several enemy units closing in. Might want to stop a little bit early here so we can shoot down cavalry and then I want the infantry, of course, to form line in front of uh, Howitzer's crews. So that they can reset themselves, set up on the artillery, and blast the enemy. Move over here. Oh, what's this? 23 men. Hurry over here. Yeah, they're broken. You two. Into column. And over here. As quickly as possible. Let's see if we can't save as much of this cavalry as possible. Get them out of harm's way. Let the uh, regiments shoot those guys down. And have the artillery blast them as they go. Okay, looks like there is a second wave coming in. But it's going to kind of trickle in against us. So it's going to take a while before we get another kind of proper fight and uh, as that is preparing to uh, 
take place. I'm gonna reorganize a little bit. Because we've got most of the howitzers over here. We have additional two over there. Three on that side. Oh, we have a small group here. Get back on the howitzer. Let's check every howitzer group. That we have left. Okay, so we have uh, six howitzer groups left. And more troops coming in. But yeah, as I said, it looks like it's going to take a while before the next kind of wave, big wave, is going to hit us. There's going to just be a few smaller attacks as uh, they're kind of readying themselves, getting in order for a second move against us. Second wave is now moving in. The infantry is coming at us from multiple angles. We've got quite the formations here, not as starved out as some of the others. And then, of course, constant harassment by Mughal cavalry, which kind of breaking holes in my lines everywhere, which I don't like. Oh, they're trying to go around? I'm not sure what this unit, where this unit's going. Anyways, you two should target him. Finally, that cavalry unit's gone. And these units should target the incoming infantry. Got another group of elephants coming from that angle. Good, they are broken and they're being pushed back. Now let's focus in on uh, the infantry is coming in here. Plus two, three cavalry units marching in. Let's focus on the infantry. I think if the infantry gets close enough, actually the elephants look mighty dangerous over here. We've beaten elephants' attacks like this before, but... This one... Uh, shit, that one... Annihilated the unit, more or less. It completely just rampaged through the unit. The elephants were broken right afterwards, but... Damn. They just completely ran through there. We've got some infantry rallying over there. And got some infantry over on this side as well. Needs to be taken care of. Let's see. Quite the units over here. Get this one. But that looks to be the second wave, more or less, destroyed. We still got quite a few units coming in, but unfortunately they all kind of just trickle in. But I think we might be looking at some of the last units coming in here. Let's make sure I don't want this elephant to come up behind me, and it's not... It's actually leaving. Very good. Very good indeed. Looks like the Mughals actually listened to what I said and they've now gathered up their troops for a front, a front, a full frontal assault with troops along all the lines that are not kind of trickling everyone in. So this is how we deal with a third wave of enemy infantry. They've also set up their artillery up here to bombard us. We'll see how that goes. Probably not too well for them.
volleys going in. We've got heavy cavalry being able to pass in between the volleys here. And that could be very nasty if it weren't for the second line being able to open up on them. And the howitzers destroying most of the infantry attack here. And then the unit holding rank, punishing the Indian cavalry by shooting it to pieces. However, it looks rather nasty with all this Indian infantry closing in. We're gonna... Um, oh, here comes... They're coming really close. Don't really want to fire with the back ranks as much because there's a risk of us shooting our own lines. But in this case, we could see that these two firing actually broke that attack. And I think we're gonna let this one get in because I'm pretty sure these guys will be broken upon reaching the line. Hold your fire. Keep firing the howitzers more and more. Infantry is coming in. They're really going after kind of this point right here. Which they're punishing a lot. As I think this might be it. I'm going to fling up the flag. And we're going to see about killing as many of these tro retreating troops as possible. Okay, so they weren't actually broken here. And they're able to bring in a, yet another unit. I'm going to bring you to the side. And then the units in the back will open fire. I'm ordering you to move to the side. And kind of opening the field of fire. For the units in the second rank. And yes, they were broken. And now the flanking troops are coming in. And we can kind of finalize the defeat of all these troops. Yeah, looks like the third wave has been broken and pushed away. There's so many bodies littering the ground here. It's beyond count. The battle actually counts as a close defeat and the reason for that is I was able to defeat everyone except this one unit general's unit that's stuck on the border there that never retreated. It was just sitting there. And I was unable to get it. Now, I mean, the enemy intercepted me, so it should count as them attacking me, right? But, um... Yeah. Close defeat, apparently. The battle counts as a defeat, which means that I lose an extra high amount of troops because and not as many recover so we almost lose half the army 3,000 men out of 7,000 the enemy though loses a lot more they out of the 10,000 they lose 7,500 leaving only about 2,000 men left highest kills goes to infantry and not the howitzers quite interesting but yeah unfortunately because of that predicament, I am not actually counted as the winner of that battle. However, given that these armies are completely broken down, I don't think we'll uh, see them advancing any further against Hyderabad. Um, however, we lost quite a lot of troops, as we can see. So two cavalry units, a howitzer... And I'm not entirely sure. Could it be a Sepoy unit? Yeah, it's, it's a Sepoy unit. One Sepoy units. 
two cavalry, one howitzer was lost out of this army. And out of this army, we obviously lost all the militia units. And in addition to that, we lost what looks like uh, three howitzers. I believe there was eight. But I should be able to push through quite easily. Given the situation and how broken down the enemy is, um, shouldn't really pose much of a threat. Should be able to move my armies through and destroy them. So for next video, we'll be concentrating on the war in Europe instead by moving in on uh, Munster and destroying them, the bastards. But with that said, I uh, say as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.